Awesome. Well, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Lindsay Syacom. I'm a solutions architect, both AWS and Azure at LogicWorks. Um, LogicWorks is a cloud migration and managed services partner. I'll talk a little bit about that. But today, what I'm going to talk about is cloud operations for healthcare companies. And that may seem to you at first glance like a pretty boring topic. Um, it's certainly, uh, it, it, um, for many companies, they focus on migration. They focus on what, what security tools do I need in, in order to implement to protect both my users and my, my business. And that is an incredibly important part of the story. But I think a lot of times, some of the more mundane topics of everyday operations, especially in an AWS and Azure environment, kind of get left by the wayside in the cloud migration process. And so that's what I'd like to talk about today, but how you develop a team and plan for cloud operations in this new landscape, and particularly for healthcare companies. So let me click my slide. I'm just going to follow everybody's example and turn off my video while I go through this. So as I said, LogicWorks is a top global cloud migration management partner. These are some of our customers we've worked with in the past on the right. And these are customers we not only migrated from on-premise to AWS or Azure, but have also been long-term management partners. The, the, the company on this list that has worked with us the least is three years, right? So these are long-term partnerships that we undertake with our customers to help them not only with sort of security and migration, but also with ongoing operations. So the reason why so many healthcare companies and finance companies work with LogicWorks is we undergo six annual audits. That's in, we're high trust CSF certified. We undergo a SOC 1, SOC 2, ISO 27001, we're PCI DSS level one certified. So we undergo our own audits. We understand the companies we work with go through their own audits too. And so when companies come to us and say, help, I'm migrating to AWS. I have either a new customer that wants to meet high trust, wants me to meet high trust standards, or I've got an internal SOC 2, or I've got HIPAA data in my environment. Those are the questions they come to us with. And we kind of help them both design a high trust compliant environment or a high trust enabled environment. And operate in a way that will allow them to pass their audits. So let's get into the meat and potatoes. Why I want to talk about cloud operations today is because so many of the companies that we talk to fall under this statistic. 76% of IT staff, and that's you know frontline IT staff, believe that their leadership, their CIO, their CTO, their CEO, underestimate the time and cost of cloud management. And this was from a independent research study that we commissioned um, a, a couple years ago. I believe this is a really important statistic and something that pans out in all the conversations I have on a daily basis as a solutions architect, which is companies come to us and they say, you know, we migrated to the cloud a couple years ago, or we migrated one of our applications to the cloud a couple years ago, and we've been unable to migrate anything else because our staff is firefighting daily issues on the cloud platforms. We haven't had time to translate our on-prem operations procedures to the cloud universe. We still haven't figured out ingress and egress filtering, just these core operational components they still are struggling with and therefore unable to focus on the cool stuff of the products they want to launch on the cloud or the new stuff the business wants to do on the cloud because they're busy firefighting. And I think this comes down to a core challenge, which is a lot of IT management, especially IT management who's not IT savvy um, or, or cloud savvy, have interpreted the cloud as being A, they, the cloud platforms have said, you know, our platform is HIPAA enabled, or you can use these HIPAA enabled services. And they assume right? That that means that more of their responsibility for HIPAA compliance is taken away from them, which is, as we'll get to in a minute, sort of true and sort of not, right? The second thing is a lot of sort of C-suite executives think that they've bought into the, the advertising of cloud, that cloud is easy. You should be able to run your entire cloud environment with one guy, 
right? If you because everything's automated in some magical universe that that this uh, this marketing they've bought into projects, which, as we all know, is not actually how the cloud operates, right? You can automate it, but even the automation needs to be managed, right? Um, so I think that has led to a, a sort of underestimating the effort of cloud management that's actually required across a lot of industries, especially healthcare. So what are some of the dangers of doing that? As I said, stalled cloud migration projects, you know, isolated cloud projects without common standards. So uh, certain teams will do some things and other teams will do other things, right? And most important, there is ad hoc security configurations in multiple cloud environments because there's, there's no focus on the operational program. There's more focus on getting the immediate problem fixed right, on the cloud security level. And what that means is some part of your environment has a WAF, the other part is just security groups. Nobody really understands what there should be. There's no common standard. Um, and so that, that leads to a lot of operational challenges, as you can expect. So both Microsoft and AWS have this concept of operational excellence as part of the well-architected framework, which is basically their opinion on, you know, what's the right way to cloud, right? We all know these things, right? We should have a reliable and a predictable and automated operations. We should make small, frequent, reversible changes. We should have all of our operational procedures defined as code. We, I think a lot of us probably on this call understand that these are the best practices, but how do we get there? How do we design a team that can implement these things and isn't always stuck firefighting? This question, before we can even answer that, has to begin with what are we responsible for managing in the cloud and level setting with your executives about what the cloud, what operating a HIPAA or high trust environment on the cloud actually means. And I actually recommend to everyone who's, you know, an, in an IT manager or an, even a frontline IT position, if you feel like your management doesn't fully understand the line between AWS or Microsoft and you in terms of responsibility um, and hasn't familiarized themselves with that model to actually spend some time to present that to them. And I think it'll be a light bulb moment for your team to say, oh, there's actually a lot that we're responsible for here. And therefore I should give you the budget and the resources and the staff to, to be more effective on an ongoing basis. So what are we responsible for managing? I'm sure everyone on this call has seen the cloud responsibility matrix, which is basically AWS or Microsoft's line in the sand of the AWS or Microsoft will manage the infrastructure. You're kind of responsible for everything else. But as we know, that's different based on whether you're using IaaS services, whether you're using container services, whether you're using something like RDS or uh, DynamoDB or S3, which is a PaaS service. Um, and so where I recommend a lot of companies start is, you know, once you've got a level set of, with your executives of here's what we're actually responsible for, go through your cloud environment and say, what services are we using? And does everyone on our IT team understand what we're responsible for versus what the service does natively? Um, I talk to a lot of customers who think, oh, I'm on RDS, so therefore um, everything is encrypted. And I'm like, no, it could be encrypted. It actually, RDS makes it easier for you to encrypt. You could, it's basically a checkbox, but you still have to check the box. You know, you still have to make sure that encryption is always enabled whenever one of your developers spins up an RDS database, right? So there's all of these operational components uh, to think about in every service you use. So this is not a simple landscape where every service has the same line in the sand, right? And that's why it makes sense to spend time and spend cycles really going through this and thinking about it. So what does cloud management look like? What if I was to design a cloud management team, what, what would that look like? Um, so obviously things like 24 seven operational support. You need somebody to monitor, you need somebody to patch, incident response, agent management. This is what most people think of as cloud management. But there are also these other columns that are introduced because of cloud that a lot of companies don't account for, like having a technical PM, because most companies, when they're moving to cloud, they're also offering a cloud-based SaaS product, right? They have new customer demands directly to the cloud team. 
And having a technical PM to orchestrate tickets and prioritize becomes much more important. You also have cost management. Before we had three-year refresh cycles where we only needed to involve the finance team, you know, once every three or five years or whatever. Now, every month we get a new cloud bill and new services are being spun up and that needs to be managed. And so that needs a role. And finally, we have this CI, CD, and infrastructure as code management pipeline. That's, you know, where I play on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, that's things like, how do we automate the fact that our RDS databases should always be launched with encryption turned on? How do we automate the fact that every new resource we spin out, we wanted to stamp it and have it all be the same with all the same security controls in place because we want everything to be high trust enabled. Um, so that is also a role that a lot of companies need to start hiring for, right? Now, mature cloud teams, as I said, have a kind of separate team for each of these, but SMB teams that we talk to often have, you know, an engineer that's eight by five for the operational support. And then their IT manager is fulfilling kind of this service delivery cost management function. And the IAC management is either not hired or ad hoc by the engineer, right? In the, in the spare time that he has, which is normally he or she has, which is normally nothing, right? So... When we sit down with, you know, as logic groups, when we sit down with a company and really come up with what their cloud management plan is, we start by level setting with what actually needs to be done on a day-to-day -day basis and how much time it takes. So, I'll, you know, I'll, Rod will be sharing the recording after this. You can go through this chart. People have found this very helpful just to be able to budget for how much cloud management is even going to cost them. So I'm going to very quickly go through a case study of how we helped a company um, manage their cloud more effectively. This was an EMPI platform, so Enterprise Master Patient Index. Um, they had millions of healthcare records. They wanted to launch a cloud-based SaaS product, but they only had three to five internal IT staff and no experience on AWS and a desire to be high trust compliant within three months, which is an incredibly short timeline. We actually ended up extending that to six months. And they looked at all the high trust CSF domains, right? Anybody who's gone through a high trust audit, very familiar with these domains. They looked at all these and said, this is overwhelming to us. What can LogicWorks help us to tackle in terms of these domains? So we came along and we said, okay, we're going to offer you our LogicWorks managed services. This is the shameless plug of the uh, presentation. We offered them cloud operations complete, which is basically monitoring, backups, engineering support, configuration management, networking, cost management, and all of their third-party security tools, we resell them directly to the customer. And we ended up going through that high-trust CSF framework and cutting through all of their controls so that the company had about six, 375 controls they needed to meet. And more than half of those or just about half of those were taken care of by AWS and LogicWorks because we took care of things like patching. We took care of things like incident management, right? Um, so that they could focus on the other parts of the high trust audit and get to their high trust audit in time. So the result of the project was we saved them about, they told us their estimate for how much staff they would have hired had they had not hired LogicWorks. Um, we saved them about 40% by not having to hire an additional four engineers to manage AWS on a day-to-day -day basis versus what we charge for our services. We also reduced their compliance scope, right? We're taking care of a lot of things that they don't need to take care of, so less headache for them. They passed their high trust audit in March of 2021, flying colors, and they got, again, this improved IT efficiency. You know, they, they, we gave them the cost management team. We gave them a project manager. We gave them the IAC management and we gave them the infrastructure support they needed in order to move forward effectively. So that was my very quick uh, presentation about cloud operations and why it's so important to think about and plan for it. And I hope it was helpful to you all.